Hello, everyone. My name is Ole Kagan, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for LA, LA County Library, and I welcome you to Computers, the Very Basics. This program is supported in whole or in part by the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library Services and Technologies Act, administered in California by the state librarian. And your presenter for today is Connor Johnson. Connor is a MAKEMO or Maker Mobile Librarian, which means that he drives a colorful van all over Los Angeles County doing STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math programs for folks ages five and up. So you might find him on any given day at a senior center, a school, a park, a library, and many other places, including this virtual environment. Today, Connor will be telling you about computers, the very basics. Connor, the stage is yours. Great. Thank you, Oleg. And good morning, everybody. Let me go ahead and swap over to my PowerPoint so we can go ahead and get started. Great. So today, um, we're going to be talking about computers, uh, the very basics. Um, we'll get to know some basic terminology um, and kind of stay at a, at a general um, fundamental level um, and uh, learn about how, how, how we use these machines that, that are so ubiquitous in our society. Um, so really today we're going to talk about um, parts of a computer um, and what those parts do, how they function. You might have heard some of some of the parts before, but not quite sure what, what they do. Um, so just a, a basic way of looking at computers, even fundamental concepts, um, you know, the, the on and off button, the, the power button to turn it off, um, other things that, that we do on the computer, um, accessing the internet, typing up on worksheets and emails, um, all require basic knowledge of how a computer operates. Um, I'm not a computer engineer by trade, um, for sure. Um, but And so for everybody else who's not, um, it's just kind of a, a general look at, a, at computer functionality. Um, and well, I mean, why use a computer? Uh, you know, unless you are a computer engineer doing uh, working on parts or, or programming or coding. Um, the rest of us, you know, we, we use it for, for fun, for work, um, for socialization, looking up um, information, um, storing our information, you know, our archives of, you know, 25 plus years of, of photos, you know, that I, I keep on my computer. Um, so you might have documents that, that you keep on there as well. Um, lots of lots of uses for computers. You know, we could go off talking about why why we use them. Um, but uh, so again, today we're just going to focus on the names and the basic parts of computers, um, how we input into a computer. Um, and then how to access those basic programs that, that we use, like how to access the internet or Word documents. Um, just a, a little touch on, on that at the end. Um, the parts of a computer um, we'll be getting into. Um, and when uh, we talk about computer inputs and outputs, um, what I'm talking about is what we input into a computer, you know, using a, a keyboard. Um, and then the outputs that we receive. Um, you know, on the monitor, on the display, or even uh, tactile feedback from a, a, a gaming joystick. Um, so we input into the computer using the keyboard, the mouse, these peripheries um, are all the parts that we're going to be talking about. Um, and uh, one, you know, fundamental distinction between computers is um, that they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, you know, we can uh, use laptops, desktops, um, laptops, of course, you know, being uh, most important uh, and useful for uh, their portability and their convenience. Um, they can be accessed uh, uh, without having to have a, a dedicated power supply using the battery. Um, uh, laptops are smaller and more convenient. Desktop computers generally have more parts and uh, their modular um, processing power can be more um, uh, can be higher, um, you know, they can be more powerful, um, but they're stationary, they're in one place. Um, and, you know, in, in today's world, using a laptop and, and not having to lug around a big desktop computer is, is, uh, is pretty important. Um, 
And so this is some of those key differences there. Um, you know, the desktop again remains stationary um, and a laptop. Um, all the parts and pieces are under the keyboard and the, the monitor is built in. Um, on the desktop computer, these are all separate. The keyboard is separate, mouse is separate, uh, monitor, um, the tower, uh, the computer tower um, can be built in in an all-in-one. We see that a lot more common now. Um, you know, we, less so we see the actual separate tower, the CPU tower. Um, <clears throat> you know, just fewer wires, more uh, streamlined approach um, to to the same computer. Um, so, just some some main differences there that you may have uh, you may know, but thinking about it is kind of okay. Yeah, yeah, it's puts in a little different um, perspective. Um, the the computer parts you see on the screen um, again you may have you may have heard of some of these um, and we'll just go over them and what they mean in a very general way. So a, a motherboard um, is kind of the foundational backbone of a of a computer. It's where all the other pieces can be slotted in. So when you might have heard people talking about building their own computers, you know the the the, the backbone, the foundation for that is the motherboard, um, and then the the rest of these are all um, slots and a part of, of the computer, but they're all dependent on that motherboard. So that's when people say that, that's what that's what they mean. Um, and these are also um, all upgradable and customizable parts, again, with, with uh, the, the people that build their own computers. And I, I don't have those skills, I would love to, um, but that that's the, these are the parts that people are, are mostly referring to. Um, these are the basics. So next up, I did uh, mention the, the, the computer tower, um, CPU tower. Um, it, the, the CPU is, is, uh, is also known as the, you can call it the tower. Um, it's it's used the the name is used the same but uh, it, they're different parts um, within that motherboard um, and and its own circuit is is a central processing unit and that's the the basic brains of your computer that's going to um, receive instructions and interpret those uh, <laughs> those instructions uh, so they they carry out everything that you, that you're inputting when you type. Um, words on it's the computer is thinking knows knows what those keys correspond to and put them visually on the screen for you um, using tiny little pixels. Um, it's it's an amazing process. Um, and again, this is just a, a, a basic look at, a, at what what happens when we're using a computer. Um, the next part of a of a computer um, is uh, known as the RAM. And this is uh, a short term memory. Um, it allows your computer to to recall um, the current task that you're doing. It's uh, higher RAM, um, it generally means faster processor. The CPU also, of course, um, interplays with that. Um, uh, RAM is measured in giga, um, gigabytes. Um, uh, the processing speed is gigahertz. So, you know, maybe you go into Best Buy and are shopping for a new um, computer and you hear all these terms. Um, eight gigabytes is a standard amount of RAM for desktop computers these days. Um, pretty much anything you find in a big box store would be um, something that you could use for, um, you know, word processing and email access and, and internet searching. Um, so uh, th these are just uh, when you see those those stats and how many, you know, gigahertz and stuff. That's talking about the processing speed. And then uh, uh, gigabytes would be the, the short-term memory. How many programs can you have running at, at once? Um, hard drive, um, it's, it's, it's also a form of memory, but we don't, tend to not think of it that way. Again, when I have you know, hundreds of gigabytes of photos from you know, over the years, um, you know, those are stored on my hard drive and I just generally don't touch those. You know, they're just there for, for posterity. Um, and uh, so all these together are basically when we think about a computer, you know, how it thinks. Um, oh, and you know, I skipped the video and sound sound card. Um, so computers are going to have ways to process the the video and the graphics that that we see, and that's what the video and sound cards are for. Um, a lot of laptops come with the integrated. Um, not customizable. Um, that's why when a lot of people talk about gaming system or gaming PCs or gaming laptops, um, the, graphic, uh, the graphical power on that is going to be more necessary than uh, you or I might need just for regular um, 
app usage. And uh, so there's, you know, updating, upgrading um, video cards. You know, we might have heard about, you know, video card shortages the last few years. Um, that, that's what people are referring to. For general needs, uh, we don't need to worry about whether we have the latest and greatest in really any of these categories, but it's good to know that they exist and what they do um, and how they um, uh, it changes the way that we interact with our computers and how fast they are. So next, um, we have a monitor. So on laptops, you know, this is built in part of the laptop. Um, you know, we can have uh, hook up multiple laptops, uh, I'm sorry, multiple monitors, um, have uh, different information, you know, bigger monitors means we can access more information that we can see. Um, but it just, in everything that we input comes out on the monitor. Um, again, just kind of works like a TV. Um, and then the keyboard, um, the keyboard is, um, definitely one of the main ways that we interact and we input information. Um, uh, letters, numbers, symbols, and you know anything on that keyboard um, allows the, the CPU to display that on the monitor. Um, along with mice, um, these are really the primary means of input. Um, so uh, computer mount, uh, mouse, um, that of course allows us to uh, move the cursor around on the screen. Um, it's the primary method for interacting with specific areas of the screen um, and navigating within apps um, and programs and web pages. So most mice will have a left button and a, a right button. It's not always the case. Um, Apple uh, mice just generally have the, the one button. Um, there's also sometimes scroll wheels um, to move through pages or their text. Um, and then uh, you can even get um, <laughs> giant mice with, you know, all kinds of buttons. Um, and I, I generally like having a, a few extra buttons like to, to do the volume up or uh, up or down or move from track um, to track when I'm listening to music just with, with a push of one of those buttons. So these are all very customizable parts. Um, you know, just the basics would be a, a basic mouse, but know that there are other, other ways um, of making that work for you if you uh, want some maybe better uh, uh, productivity or or you just want to be able to to do the volume or the, or the going through tracks um, quicker using your mouse. And uh, if you're using a laptop, so your mouse your mouse might be a trackpad. Um, it's a small sensitive uh, touch sensitive um, trackpad on your laptop. <laughs> Obviously can't see I'm looking down to show mine um, and that you navigate using a finger. Um, across that surface. And just a, a, a tip because um, I per I personally, I can't, I, I, I've never been able to, to navigate well on a, using a trackpad. If you're not gonna use it and um, you might accidentally brush across it, you can always turn that trackpad off. Um, my first laptop 20 years ago had, a, had an on off dedicated hardware switch for the trackpad, but nowadays it's mostly in the, in the setting. So if that's bothersome to you, know that it's a feature that can be turned on or off. And the headphone jack. Um, so some of us might be aware that, that these um, headphone jacks are uh, um, no longer you know, able to be found on so many newer mobile devices. They're kind of going the way um, of the dinosaur as everything goes to wireless and Bluetooth um, listening devices instead of a dedicated um, headphone jack. So if that's something that's important to you, um, just be aware that, that, that it might not be available for you in the future on new tech, um, just something to be aware of. Um, and of course, there, there's obviously you can still listen to music using like the Bluetooth um, headphones and, and speakers and, and, and such. Um, uh, another another important part of, uh, of computer um, computers are the ports, and you know we see all, all kinds of ports um, over the years. There've been lot, lots of different kinds. Um, fortunately, we're kind of getting to the point where um, USB, so that's universal ser serial bus, um, the um, just the the what you see on the on the screen there. That's the USB ports. Those are really becoming more and more actually universal. So we can plug in our, our mice, we can plug in um, our speakers, um, hard external hard drives. 
um, and uh, and they're they're really becoming uh, the the USB C especially, um, which we is the smaller smaller one which we can uh, charge most of our phones and stuff these days are USB C, um, USB C, uh, those are becoming more and more um, the, the only the only real port uh, and so so very actually universal. Um, but it's important that if you have existing tech or existing peripherals um, and you're shopping for a new device, um, you know, you want to make sure that there's compatibility um, between the devices that you currently have or want to be using versus what what um, what you're looking to purchase. So just just a, a um, tip right there. Um, and then booting up a computer, um, you know, the, most of the power buttons um, have the, the icon that you see there. Um, nowadays, you know, lots of people just open and close a, a laptop lid and that's their on and off. Um, but there is an actual dedicated power button um, still, so just something to be aware of. Um, and then another another um, another cause of some of common issues um, is the uh, clicking uh, versus double clicking on a mouse. Um, so when you're moving a mouse, you can uh, you can have it hover over like a text or an image, and often um, the text will pop up. You know, metadata showing you what 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 you're hovering over or the the URL for the link um, that you're hovering over, um, and you can uh, click once or twice um, on things. And growing, growing up, growing up on, without the internet, everything seemed to be two clicks. And and when I'm talking about double clicking, that's um, you know clicking the left mountain, the left mouse button, um, twice in rapid succession. So a, a double click, you know, click click. Um, really, that's the only time we we need to do that nowadays is if we're on the desktop of a computer and we want to click on a link. Uh, on an icon to open an app um, or a program, most things are are one click. Um, and so when I when I see users wanting to double click everything, I'm like, you know, by default, one click um, is usually going to suffice. Um, if if nothing happens, then you'll know that there there might be a need to be a, a second click. But when you're on the on the internet. Um, and you're waiting for pages to open. A single click may take a second, um, you know, depending on the um, how fast your internet is or how fast your computer is. Um, but uh, I always recommend if you want to double if you want to double click by default, think, go back to the one click mindset um, and do that by default. Another aspect of mouse control um, is the is right clicking. And if you're using an, an Apple mouse, again, that's just one button. So to get to these context menus would be a uh, command uh, and, uh, and click to do the same thing that, uh, that uh, the right mouse uh, button does. And that will open a context menu like you see um, above, or um, like to copy text, paste text, um, get properties or personalize. You can see all, all these things. So usually the think of the right mouse button as a context menu. So keyboards, um, again, keyboards are one of the, the, you know, the primary inputs that that we have when it comes to to what we want to do on a computer actually happening. Um, keyboards um, come in all kinds of uh, uh, shapes and sizes. Also, um, you know, we might be used to the, the the layout that we see above. This is, you know, a standardized U.S. version of a keyboard. Um, you know, different. Uh, different places are going to have different looking keyboards, different symbols. Um, so familiarize yourself with, with whatever layout that is most comfortable to you. But beyond that, the shape of the keyboard, um, they have some really amazing ergonomic keyboards that, uh, that make it a lot easier to type for extended periods of time if that's something that, that you're doing. Um, you know, I have an ergonomic keyboard at home and I, uh, I, I you know, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on it all the time. It would be hard if it was a regular keyboard. Um, so that's something to look into as well. Um, and when it comes to, to keyboards, so on this uh, standardized US um, version layout, you know, you're going to see some, some basic um, components. So we'll just talk about those really quick. Um, so on that left, top left, uh, we would have a tab 
So a tab is going to create an indentation in a, in a text box, or it's going to allow you to go from one text box um, to the next. So um, I often say when um, like filling out forms online, um, going from box to box using tab can be a lot simpler and make sure you don't miss anything than just um, having to, to move the, the mouse into each corresponding box. So if you've ever had to fill out um, uh, a form online, uh, like when doing a purchase or, or a financial transaction, that can be a helpful um, tool to use to think about tabbing. Um, the caps lock, um, so when the caps lock is toggled, that's going to mean every um, character is uppercase, and that is an on and off. So most caps lock um, keys will have a corresponding light that comes on when you click it to remind you that it's on. Um, and sometimes you won't be able to do certain tasks and it will remind you that the caps lock is on. Um, personal experience, <laughs> I've been there. Um, shift is also a, a way to capitalize, um, but it has to be held as, as you're um, uh, pressing the character. So it's not a toggle on and off. Um, the enter, um, you know, that will, the old return space from, old, from olden days, um, it, you can, uh, we'll begin a new text line under the current one, you know, new paragraph, um, whatnot. Um, but it's also acts as a left click, uh, uh, you know, an affirmative yes um, and OK. Um, and then there's uh, the backspace um, that's going to delete the previous text. Um, and so these are these are all basics. Um, and of course, you can always um, if you have a special keyboard or a specialty keyboard that will come up with instructions as well if there's special buttons on it. Um, and then just finally, um, this is just uh, uh, screenshots of what um, a desktop would look like. Um, so when you power on the machine, it's, you know you have everything in working order and you're ready to go online or you're ready to, to access you know, Microsoft's suite of, of uh, productivity apps you know, to uh, write a document or open Outlook. Um, those are the double click, uh, the double clicks with the left mouse button um, that you're going to use to open those. Um, and that's kind of kind of where the, the, the general look at, at computers um, we have for you today kind of ends. We're not going to go into into that. Th those are all we have. We have um, we have more uh, programs about about the specifics of uh, opening um, and, and using these these software. Um, but if you know you are interested in uh, in more about computer basics, um, we have a lot of resources here at LA County Library: computers for seniors for dummies, uh, Windows 10 All-in-One, MacBook, um, laptops for dummies, um, lo lots of you know um, print material um, as well. If that's what you're most most comfortable with, going into it. Um, and of course, we have our reference services um, available. Um, you can speak to a librarian by phone, email, or um, like a chat service, the instant librarian. Um, for more information about um, that service, you can go to lacountylibrary.org backslash contact us. And again, this uh, was presented by the LSTA um, funding. So thank you for them. And then I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Oleg um, to kickstart our Q&A. Hey, Connor, thank you very much for that presentation. I don't currently have any questions. So if you do have questions out there, please place them in the Q&A and we'll spend time here covering them. I know that we had we had one uh, comment in the chat here. Are mice important today in the computer world? So that I know that you were talking about trackpads, but how about these? Yeah, yeah, my yeah, like yes, mice are. I, I'm just gonna wake up my room as I speak. Um, yes, <laughs> mice are are definitely definitely still in the conversation, and I, I don't, you know, I don't I don't see them going anywhere, um, especially because there are different um, because a mouse can do so much beyond just um, navigating out, or, you know, around your screen and double clicking, you know, like I was talking about uh, the mouse that I use at home has multiple buttons to do, you know, even more. And I can customize what I want those to do. You know, if you want your, you know, your, your fifth mouse button to, you know, open a specific app every time you, you press it, you know, you can customize it. Um, so that level of custom 
customization, you know, gaming mice, um, you know, ergonomic mice um, to create a more um, uh, ver vertical alignment with your wrist. Um, those, those are all factors that come into to mice as, as a product. I don't see that going anywhere, especially with, like with me when I'm like, I, I, I can't, I can't figure out how to easily use that trackpad and get anything done with with you know like a modicum of success without getting frustrated so i i will always i will always be purchasing my so if i have to single-handedly hold up the industry i will i'm right there with you on the trackpad i can use it on this laptop which is what i'm using right now uh, but on my on my other laptop uh, I, I just can't every time i put my hand on it like I'm trying to type and then my hand brushes the mouse, the trackpad. It's very irritating. And it just in general, just ergonomically, I much prefer to have even like this, this is just a simple little wireless mouse um, yeah. that that I use. I use it all, I use it all the time. I mean, I, I put it on one computer. There you got one too. I put it on one computer. I, I put a little USB dongle onto the other computer. Um, just switch it around. It's it's really, really convenient to use. And I know that there's some people who, like you said, there's ergonomic mice and there's they have mice with all sorts of different shapes. Um, there's even like, just like joystick mice. So if you're, you know, if you have carpal tunnel, if you have other issues with your hands, then there are mice that are designed to make zooming around the computer screen with your cursor a lot easier. So that's something to note. So even if, if you go to Best Buy or something, you can see that they have they have a, a variety selection of mice. So yeah, I think I think I echo what you're saying that mice are very much still, very much still active. Um, we had a question: Do you have the next level classes? Oh yeah. Well, we don't have a next level, so we don't have a, like computers the next level. We do have a variety of different topics that we cover when it comes to computers. So we have anything from, you know, like this, the computer, the very basics, this is just like the, the simplest kind of stuff about computers. We also have classes about, you know, we have three different classes on email um, that cover the stuff from like the basic email to filters, creating rules, you know, kind of avoiding spam, all kinds of th things like that to really organize your inbox. We have some of those. We also have classes on, like the fourth industrial revolution, which I, you cover, uh, Connor, and we we did it a couple of weeks ago, and we have classes on avoiding online scams. We have classes on blockchain, you know, introducing introduction to blockchain, which I feel like has was was really a, a huge thing and is still pretty big, but I think it's kind of gotten a little bit, uh, it's trending a little bit down, and AI has really taken its right. place it, as the it as doesn't a have the technology. same level of excitement like the the a lot of the a lot of the the applications of blockchain are kind of they're they're fuzzy so people yeah. don't you know it's not exciting like wow like ai like um so i i think that the implications for blockchain are, are there but yeah it's definitely not it's that we don't hear about it um nearly as much uh now but it'll be interesting to see how the how the hmm. how it continues to develop and we were just talking about this yesterday. Next month in April, we're going to have a class all about artificial intelligence. And we're going to demo some of those cool things that people are doing. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And I think that you know, folks who are reading about AI in the newspapers, um, we'll be showing you some of those things. And you'll find that actually some of those things you could you could go and play with yourself, like ChatGPT, really easy to play with. And it's just it's a chatbot. It feels like you're talking to a person. It's it's very interesting. Um, so if you can you can find our past classes, we record the majority of our digital literacy classes, and you can the, all those topics, the three email classes, the online scams, um, you know, the blockchain, those are all available. Uh, via our YouTube playlist. We have a digital literacy playlist on our YouTube channel, and I'm posting a link to that in the chat. And if you have suggestions for topics, we have a post-event survey that we send out after every program. And the very last question of that, I mean, there's only like two questions, three questions, um, is what would you like us to cover in the future? So if there are topics you want us to cover, we got you. So let me see what other, we've got a few other questions came in. Okay, you mentioned coding. I think it was right at the beginning of the presentation. Um, what does that mean? So when I yeah, so when I'm talking about being a computer engineer or, or coding, uh, we're talking about liter being um, the ones that actually write. So behind behind every application, everything that we do, there's 
there's there's lines of code. Maybe you've heard that that phrase. There's instructions um, that 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 we input um, that tells the computer when something happens. This is what's going to happen. Um, you know, when we press uh, F on the keyboard, you know, uh, an F is going to show up on the monitor. You know, in this location on the monitor. Um, th those those are all handled through um, through written lines of instructions um, referred to as as coding. Um, um, al you know, there's algorithms at play um, that, you know, if if this series of inputs occur, then this is going to be the output for the user. Um, so sometimes you might hear there, you know, something ha so there's like a big breakdown in some technology, um, you know, because there was a, a, a misplaced or a typo in, in one line of code among you know thousands and thousands of lines of code. Um, when we're talking about coding, that that's what we're talking about. And um, and uh, I am not, not a coder myself. I'd love to have that skill. Um, so I don't have any personal insights um, into the coding process. Um, and I like it, do you, yeah yeah. I was like go go. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a professional developer. I've done uh, web development. So I've built websites and some of the back, back end of websites and I have coded in Python before. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's really interesting. Um, it there's, you know, if you're just a computer beginner, it, there is a bit of knowledge that you need to get started. So if you're just, you know, you're barely turning on your computer and just using the kind of the internet and stuff like that, you've got a, a few things to learn before you can, be proficient in coding. However, some really basic applications, just for for instance, you're just making something print out is really simple. I mean, the hello world, uh, make, make your, making your screen print out hello world is the most basic application for every computer programming language. And if you go to the Wikipedia page of, for instance, the programming language Python, and you scroll down, it'll show you how to do that in Python, just that code, it's print colon, and then in parentheses, hello world. Um, but yeah, no, I think uh, so computer programming, to answer the question, computer programming. <laughs> and then there are many different computer programming languages. They each have pluses and minuses. And it's a whole, it's a whole world and it's a whole interest. There are a lot of professional programs. There are hobbyists uh, that do computer programming and anything you see on your screen. It was, it was a deliberate choice by somebody either a designer or a programmer to make it happen. That's, I think, I think that's wild to think about, isn't it, Connor? That's, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting that somebody decided that, like, like this was going to the little recording icon was going to display on top and the, the chat, you know, what, what exactly was going to happen when somebody clicked the Q&A? I mean, how it, where the box pops up on the screen, what the box would look like, you know, what buttons there are, what happens when you press the buttons, all of those were deliberate decisions by the developers at Zoom. Right, just so many, so many elements at play. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, talk, talking about that, you know, digital design um, and the way that things, things look and are, are laid out. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking back to that indus fourth industrial revolution and, and, you know, the jobs of the future and, and the, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's so much room um, for, you know, uh, um, different types different types of talents and abilities um, when it, you know, when it comes to, you know, being, being, a, um, going into coding or computers um, and you're like, I don't know how to code. I, you know, my brain doesn't work that way. How am I going to find work in the future? There's, there's so much more to it, um, you know, and a, a lot of, a lot of design elements, you know, we have, a, you know, the, the A in, in Steve, you know, is, you know, Arts, is for art yeah, and design, you know, is definitely part of part of the science process and and part of technology. Um, it's not just cold hard data and facts. There's lots of room for for everybody, you know, to be involved. There's a whole sub kind of subculture subgenre of computer programming called creative programming. Um, they use languages like processing, which is all for it's like for visual display to make sort of algorithmic uh, instructions for visual display. It's very interesting. It's very cool. And there's there's a programming language for almost everything, including for artists. So it's, uh, I think that people shouldn't limit themselves. That's, 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 I think that's what you were getting. And 
at, and I think I would, I would agree with that. And I would just magnify that message. If you are interested in something, if you're interested in you're like, what is coding? You know, what does that even look like? Um, you can find out, you know, if you have questions, email me and I'll, I'll send you in the right direction. Okay. Let's get on to a few more questions here. Uh, how do you clean uh, the screen and keyboard, for example, like water spots on the screen? That's a great question because they get dirty sometimes. Yeah, I they well for yeah for the the screen. I mean, I'll, I'll use a microfiber you know cloth and and a and I'll 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 purchase a, a cleaner that's intended for for monitors. Um, you know, you don't want to just use water. Or, you know, there's you know del. del delicate you know uh, you know uh, technology that i don't want to damage um and for the keyboard um i mean i ha i have my good old dump and shake and then <laughs> you know any it problems up, and stuff right. yeah um and, and you know uh, compressed <laughs> a can of compressed air um you, you know for the yeah for for anything that's really stuck in there um you know if Anything on that you might want to take it into a specialist if you know when it comes to removing keys and, and cleaning beyond the, beyond that. I, I don't I don't have those skills. Um, yeah, very slightly damp cloth on the keyboard, like a very very slightly damp cloth. It's okay as long as if the water so the water doesn't drip off of it. I mean, you could even use one of those wet wipes. You know, like I don't know if you want to use a bleach wipe, but those like disinfectant wipes that you know they're, they're yeah as yeah as, you long, know, as, as long as they're not sopping wet. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. those work on a keyboard. All right. Uh, next question: What is a browser? So, oh, uh, so when we're talking about web browsers, um, that's the program that you use to access the internet. Um, so, uh, web browsers mainly, you know, people think of uh, Google Chrome, um, you know, so, uh, so, oops, Safari um, for Apple. Um, and, uh, you know, there's brave browser, there's, oh my gosh, there's so many, there's so many browsers, but that's what people are referring to. It's just the way to access the internet. Um, and each, you know, web browser is going to have their, their own like extensions and their own customizable options. And so when you hear about people, you know, preferring one web browser over, um, another, um, it might be because it's more known for its privacy features or it's more known for its ability to have lots of customization um, in how the internet um, is experienced, but it doesn't, it's, it's, it's all the same internet. Um, it's just the, how you're accessing it. Yep, what I just put on the screen, that was a web browser and it was fiddling around on different websites Very good. As, as you were talking. All right, let's see what the next question is here. We got a few more. And you know, if you have questions, keep putting them in the Q&A. You know, we'll, do, we'll do our best. Uh, why does my laptop computer take so many clicks to launch a program? Well, that's a hard question to answer because it really depends on the computer itself and depends on what you're trying to launch. So if there's a an icon, a program icon on the desktop, a shortcut, that should only take two clicks. So when you turn on your computer, you know, your desktop comes on, you double click that, that should, program should come up. Sometimes it takes a few seconds, but there shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to take, click that many times to do it. So if you have more details, you know, let us know, but just off the, off the top of my head, there, there shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to click more than, you know, even if, even if you're clicking in like the start menu, the start menu, the program comes up, you click it, it should start up. So there, I mean, there it may be something specific to your laptop or your computer um, that's causing right. that, but uh, it shouldn't and take too many. My my only little my tidbit of, of advice in that case is, you know, if there is there is something you know prohibiting it from starting, um, don't keep clicking or you know keep double clicking. Um, you know, if it's if it's just your computer is running slowly due to X, Y, or Z. Um, it may eventually open, but keep keeping on clicking on it to try and open it is going to overwhelm the the brains, the CPU, um, and everything even more. So if that happens again, I would and and to anybody, you know, that's one of the things. Don't don't keep trying to open it. It's gonna it's, you're just telling the computer to keep opening and keep opening, and it's like could be frying its brains um, and slow yeah. it down even more. That's just my 
little tidbit. Yeah, because it's going to keep just putting the same instructions in the in the in the buffer. Um, so it's it's going to keep giving the computer the same instructions. Eventually, it's going to try to execute all of those over and over again. So if your computer is really slow, it can take minutes for programs to start, then I suggest taking it in to a, to a repair person because that might there might be something else going on there that is not that program. The program probably may be not be the, there may be some other things running on the computer, viruses or malware or something that are causing it to, to work really slowly. Either that or it's a, just an older computer and it's it's reaching its end of life. Could, could be. And then uh, if it is a shortcut, um, you know, I'm not sure if it was said if it was a shortcut or just trying no, to open no, the there wasn't, program. And no, 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 no um, details like that. Okay. Just if, if, if there was something that was a shortcut and there, you know, there might be something wrong with the, the shortcut, you know, see so if you could access the program, you, you know, in a different, in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. Just I'm like, yeah. what are some tech options? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of, there, there, there's a lot of possibilities for why that, why that could be happening. All right. What is the most important keys? What are the most important keys for beginners to learn how to use the computer? Well, well, that's that's a great question, and there's there's a few keys that are probably the most useful. I'm looking at my keyboard right now, and I'm thinking, huh, which ones would be like the top ones? What do you think, Connor? Well, uh, was it literal? Yeah, what, which, I Key? think so. I mean, I'm like, I it. I read it both ways. Are, so you went with the keyboard, and I'm thinking yeah. more like key takeaways, like key issues. Um, Let's do both. Sure. My um well I'm really fond of that tab key. <laughs> the tab is great. <laughs> um and you know what, you know what? The the keys that, that I find myself using a lot uh, a, a lot are the um um delete and that's that's like a backspace but from before the character that you're trying to get rid of. It's um, usually on the top it's usually on the top right hand part of your keyboard. Yeah, yeah, and it, in that in that same little little section, the the home and the end, um, you know, s some people never touch those keys or any, anything other than you know the main characters. But home and end, you know, can move to the front um, of a text box. Home, um, you know, end to the end of the text box, and that's just um, same thing. Like when you're typing on um, on a a word document, um, it it, it it's a shortcut to to move you around without having to physically move your mouse and click um they're just a little shortcut so um you, you know alt tab is a is a great little Ooh, that's um, a, that, you're getting you're getting you're getting keyboard advanced, shortcut right? i mean yeah right i mean this could so be a whole if you hold if you hold alt and then you press tab you like just tap it it'll switch to a different window like if it's, it'll switch to if you have multiple windows open holding alt and pressing t and just like tapping tab will it let you choose and if you hold alt and you, you'll see which you know, there'll be a little box that comes up in the middle of your screen to see which it'll toggle between different windows. So if you, you're often shuttling between different windows, alt tab, alt tab. I'm using it all day. I think that that's a that's a really good one. I don't even think about it these days that how much I use that one. Yeah, just just tons of tons of little little shortcuts that that if um you, you know if you're on a computer and using using it long enough and over many years that sometimes you pick up on them and then i'm sure there's helpful ones that i'm not aware of um but uh that's oh, and, I, and then i guess oh go ahead i was gonna say enter enter oh and yeah <laughs> enters which they used important. to be called return some people send some keyboards is called return some people is called enter it's, it's usually a, a little line there's usually a little line going it's a kind of going down and then going to the side and pointing this way uh it's usually towards the right hand side of your keyboard and that's you know it's like a carriage return on a, what's called in on a on a uh typewriter so that's what it does in the word processing but usually it enter means you go into whatever you're whatever you have selected um when you're when you're in a window so i like enters an important one shift is an important one shift you hold shift and and you press the key where it makes it upper uppercase i mean that for that we're getting into the really basics you know just the just the, the act of typing on a computer you know making making a letter uppercase so there's that I guess that kind of has gone into the uh the, the second way of interpreting that question like some key mm -hmm. key fundamentals of computer some, like, like key keyboard, keys. Shortcut. <laughs> like keyboard those shortcuts are, those are the keyboard those, shortcuts those are, are 
I think once you start, once you get past that beginning stage of just being on a computer and getting to the places you usually go. So if you're usually you turn on the computer, you wait for it to boot up, you might put in your password. And then, for instance, you turn on your browser, you go to Firefox or Chrome and you bring up your email. And that's what you usually do, or you go to yahoo.com or CNN or whatever, whatever your favorite news site is. And that's kind of your usual highways and byways. You know, once you're comfortable there, or, you know, you go to library programs on Zoom, you know, every Thursday, maybe, maybe other days. And once you're comfortable with that, you know, the next step would be something like keyboard shortcuts, which makes your life a little bit easier because you can do certain things faster using keyboard shortcuts. So you can look up keyboard shortcuts for your whatever computer you use, whether it's a Windows computer or a Mac, by just Googling, you know, Mac keyboard shortcuts. And there's there's a lot of them. You won't need most of them, but a few of them really come in handy, like Alt-Tab. I don't know. I always use Windows key run uh, or Windows key R, which launches a little run box at the bottom of my, at the bottom of my screen. And then I type in Notepad because I use Windows Notepad all day long. So I'm always typing in, I'm always, instead of going, you know, like start menu, notepad, or even a having an icon somewhere, I just hit, you know, I just did it right now. It opened up, you know, it's like, that's how fast I, I open it up now. Just Windows key R, notepad. Um, anyway, let's, uh, I think we should move on to that. We've got some more questions. Let's move on to that next week. We're, we're, we're really going, you're making time. I hope, I hope you don't mind that we're making these kind of tangents. You know, we're sort of riffing off these questions. These, these are great well, questions. I, I, we can, we can talk about the, this kind of computer these, stuff. These are all really help. I mean, I, I think that, you know, they, they're, they're probably helpful to, to, to multiple people. So. Yeah. Hope. I mean, I feel like you could do a whole program on just like the keyboard, like what's right. on the keyboard. Let's talk about it. How can you use your keyboard better? You know, what are, what is control? What is the CTRL on the, all the way on the left and on the right, there's control buttons. What is the alt button? What is the little FN button, the function? There's usually on a, on a Windows keyboard on the bottom, there's a Windows key. And on a, on a Mac, there's a command key. You know, what are those for? Yeah, there's a lot of things those are for. They're, they're a lot of fun. Well, I'm fun for Fun for me? Fun for you, Connor? I don't know. For most I mean, people, yeah, they're I mean, kind of like, they're just a keyboard I think, buttons. You know, you, you, productivity and utilitarianness is, 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 is pretty fun. So I'm like, I'm, I'm there with you. Anything that makes life a little bit easier. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Oh, this is, you know, we're back to the fundamentals here. Is it even possible to drag and drop with a trackpad? I love my mouse. I love my mouse too, but it is possible to drag and drop with a trackpad and it's you, you do it the same way as you do it on a mouse you you know if, if like if this right here is the trackpad you go to wherever you want to drag and drop and there's usually a trackpads usually have buttons either on the bottom or like nearby you tap the button and that'll select whatever that is and then you move it around and you hold the you hold the button you move it around and then when you want to let go you remove the button and that's it. And you've moved it. You've moved your item wherever you want to take it. Is it possible to drag and drop with just the trackpad? I wonder. I'm gonna try it. I don't. I I, I use the mouse so frequently. So I have. I'm using my. I'm gonna use the trackpad. So I grabbed something. No, I don't think it's possible. You can like you don't have to click with the trackpad by you know doing a quick double tap. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't think it's possible without the, without trackpad buttons. And, you know, button, trackpads will have buttons. So, right. Like the whole, I'm just looking down. I'm like, I, I never use, I'm like, yeah, the whole trackpad is like a, a button. Yeah, I know so, for Mac, you know, they, it doesn't show the buttons, but there are buttons on the bottom, I think, right? Are there? I, I used to use a PC. So, so my knowledge of Macs are, are, is not as great as my knowledge of PCs. I, yeah, it, I think it. I think it can be confusing because I think back in the day they were discrete, separate buttons, um, mm -hmm. and now I think you know it's just one surface. So when I'm right. clicking the whole trackpad, it's it can be pressed in, but they're like you know the different different sections of the trackpad might press to produce different results. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'll, I'm gonna have to do a trackpad um, uh, primer <laughs> for myself. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've just dismissed it whole whole uh, wholesale mm -hmm. so maybe i'll have to go back in so i can at least have some some uh, knowledge on the topic right so there's somebody posted how important are shortcuts like keyboard shortcuts 
I mean, they're import as important as you want them to be. The keyboard shortcuts make life easier for computer power users, or even like intermediate users, because you can get rather than going through a whole bunch of, you know, moving things with your mouse, moving, you figure out, you can just do 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 and you're done. You did what you wanted to do. Um, so if for instance, uh, copy and paste, that's when you grab something like a piece of text from a part and you, you, t you copy it and you paste it somewhere else. So it, it appears in both places. Doing something like that with a mouse takes, you highlight the thing, you, you right click, you press copy, then you move the cursor wherever you want it to go. You right click, you press paste, um, and it'll appear there. So it's like four clicks and a few, a few things. To do it with a keyboard shortcut, you highlight what you want to do, control C, you move the cursor, control V, and it pastes. That's it. So it's, it's important in that sense. If you want to save a, a few seconds here, a few seconds there. So that's, they're mostly for convenience. All right, let's talk about, can you briefly talk about how to project the screen from a laptop to a big monitor? Yes, very briefly, you plug it in using an HDMI cable. HDMI, high definition monitor multi, input, multi-input. I think it's multi, multi is see. it multimedia? Uh, it might be multimedia. Let's see, high definition, HDMI, high definition. Yeah, you're right, multimedia interface. interface. Yeah, most monitors and laptops these days have HDMI plugs, high definition multimedia interface plugs. And yeah, that's pretty much how you do it these days. I mean, it used to be a bit more complicated. There may be a way to do it wirelessly, okay. but that gets into much more complicated kind of stuff. And I think it's not worth it for most people. But yeah, just an HDMI cable will usually, it, these with most operating systems, these Windows, Mac, it usually just happen. Like you just mirror the screen. If you want to extend your screen, then you usually have to go into screen properties um, and make it so it, so it's, uh, it just extends the screen. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much how the cable, the HDMI cable. That's a brief, brief answer. It could have been briefer. Just I should could have just said HDMI. And, yeah, and if, if um, uh, the and there are like well, like I said, a lot of uh, different protocols that can be more complex to to wireless wireless uh, wirelessly display it. But um, I it, you know, Windows does have you know the the remote um, display remotely, and I've had really good luck putting that onto my smart TV in my living room. Um, you know, when I don't want to drag out the cord. So that's something that you could um, look on the display options um, as well and, and, uh, and uh, can connect to a wireless display, I think is what the, is what mm -hmm. is called. Um, yeah. And generally, yeah, it requires more knowledge. Um, you know what Oleg is saying, because you have to make sure you're on the same network. Um, and, uh, but it's, when it works, it, it's come, <laughs> let me go, let me wake up my room. it's come a yeah, long right. way, um, mm -hmm. you know, from years past trying to trying to display on a on a remote monitor um mm. and oh i'm that was that there was you crazy. are it was, it was like <laughs> um, adjusting so, the focus. So, so it is possible and if that's something that that you want to look into um look you know look on your display properties um and your uh you know remote connection um mm. from your from your laptop and see if that's something that might be in your your field of field of options mm -hmm. let's see I have an Apple computer. Can I use the wireless mouse you just talked about, or does it have to be an Apple mouse? No, they, you can use a USB mouse, just a standard USB mouse on uh, on an Apple computer. I don't see a reason why not. Right, like this is just a simple Logitech mouse. I think it was like 20 bucks. Uh, yeah, I think you, you should be able to use this on, a, on an Apple computer without any kind of, without any special settings. Oh, I see somebody had asked, this was like half an hour ago. Can you discuss use of keys on a laptop keyboard such as control, alt, command? We did. Oh, right, hey. Oh, we did. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll talk more about it, but I feel like by that time, it's gonna be like me, you, Connor, and like three other people who are like, yeah, tell me more about keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> uh, I don't mind, I mean, I'll do it, but... Uh, but I feel like maybe that's not, let's try to get through the questions here. Um, is the browser the same as the search engine? 
So, so a, uh, they're not there. No, they're not. They're not the same. A search engine in Google's case can also be um, the browser, um, but a search engine isn't necessarily related to the browser. Although, although I'm gonna, I think, contradict myself now as um, most browsers have their own built-in search. Well, they don't have a built-in search. I mean, you're cl they have a they have a oh, you a can shortcut right, you can to a search, right? Yeah. They you get going. It's you, like, oh, why don't you? Why, why don't you? I, I'm, um, no, I think you're. I think you're. I think you're on the right. You're on the right. They, it's not so much their own search engine. It's that it's they have almost a they have a, like a shortcut from the address bar on top. They right, have a right. shortcut to a website like Google or Yahoo or Bing. Where you can where, right. they, where it then searches. Okay, right. Okay, so so if if um, you know there's you know back in the you know back in the you know day the the search engine was you know you would you know Bing, Ask Jeeves, Alta Vista, Google came along, um, and uh, so uh, there you know Google.com you know uh, you can access these search engines and use those search engines directly. Um, what Oleg is is uh is saying yes in the in the address bar where you would type in www.google.com um you can do a search from there and browsers um will uh usually you can customize what uh search engine you want to use um using that um and so there there are options you, you um, google you know by default if you type in something up in the google address bar it's going to use google's own search um, but if you want it to actually search um, like Bing um, instead, um, then you can you can change that, and that's an option that that is available to you on Chrome browser. Um, and I think uh, are you um, you know right? Go to the settings where you can change the default search engine. There we go. Cool. People, people are like, what's Ask Jeeves? <laughs> I think it's is early, it? er, earlier days oh, yeah. of, of the internet. Ask, I remember Ask Jeeves. It was, it, Jeeves was like, it's like, uh, it's a butler. Jeeves is a butler. Oh, right, right. It was, it um, was And great. Jeeves would bring you answers. Right. You, you would ask Jeeves and Jeeves was like, yes, sir, let me help you. Um, so I just changed my default search to DuckDuckGo. Let me see if it works. So I'm going to search up here in the address bar. and I'm going to just search Ask Jeeves. And so now it's going to search okay. DuckDuckGo. And here's Ask Jeeves, Google search. So it's still around. Um, it's I think it was bought by Ask.com. Um, so here's Ask.com was originally known as Ask Jeeves. Jeeves being the name of a gentleman's personal gentleman. <laughs> so it's like, it's a PJ Wodehouse. Um, Jeeves was a character in, in the PJ Wodehouse novels, which are, which are hilarious if you have not had a chance to read them. Um, so yeah. I think that's where that comes from. But uh, yeah, so you can change your, so if I go back to the settings here, I can change my, so right now I changed the setting, the search settings up here to, to DuckDuckGo. Um, what I'm gonna do is just change it back to Google because usually at work I search Google. So I'm gonna do search engine and then switch this back to Google. And now when I search up here, so I search dogs over here. So I'm just gonna search cats just for, just for balance. So when I search dogs, what do I get is I get dog and then all this right here is dogs. When I search cats, I get zodiac signs as cat breeds. Which one are you? I don't know. <laughs> this this life is interesting. Anyway, let's answer, let's answer some more questions. Uh, all right. Um, uh, what does URL stand for? Uniform Resource Locator. I would have I mean, had to look to, that one up. <laughs> it used to be, uh, what, at the beginning of the web, it used to be e URI, Uniform Resource Identifier, but then it became L Uniform Resource Locator. Um, it's just the, what a website is called. I mean, like what, what a web address is called. So you can say URL, web address, they're interchangeable. I was told to just use Google Chrome. They said it was more reliable. I mean, Google Chrome is, a, is the most popular browser out there. It's reliable. 
Firefox is just as reliable. I would say Brave is just as reliable. So I think most popular web browsers, is if you're using Mac, you're using Safari for very reliable. Uh, I would say you're no worse off using the other popular web browsers. But if you're already using Chrome, there's no reason for you to switch. I should say, if you're using Chrome and you're satisfied with it, there's no reason for you to switch. I like to play around with different browsers. Like I, I, I just like to try different ones. So, but that's just something I do for fun. So, but every, your mileage will vary. All right. How do you add icons to a desktop? That really depends on the specific computer because we can give, you know, some kind of step-by-step -step instructions. But if you're using a computer with a different setup or a different version of Windows or a Mac or a Linux computer, then the instructions will be completely different for you. So I would say if you have that question, it's better to email that and give us a little bit more information about what your, you know, what operating system you're using and what kind of icon you want to put on your desktop, then we can we can give you more specific instructions. Because otherwise I feel like we have a very high chance of misleading people. Oh. Um, what is a spinning beach ball that sometimes comes up and how do I get rid of it? That's a, that's for Max. So, uh, this, right, so uh, those, oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I don't, I don't, never, I hardly ever use a Mac, so I didn't get that it was a connection to, to Mac, but yeah, generally when there's, um, and so Oleg, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but generally when we see those icons of something whirling or something, that means that the computer is, is thinking and processing um, and to give it a second to to display what you whatever action you did is it is that is is yeah. there something different on a on a Mac? No, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's it used to be uh you know twenty years ago it used to be an hourglass that would come up, which yeah, made more it, sense as an as a, as, as an it, icon that meant something where you basically had just have to wait because the computer is doing something. It's a you. Um, it's a you. It's a user interface design feature to to as a, a visual to let you know that something is happening that we can't see. Um, so just wait for it to ha to happen. I I, rem I remember re an anecdote years ago that um, when when the first computers were were coming out, there was a big debate on whether to use you know like the hourglass type figure. You know like did, does it serve a purpose? Um, and the 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 person who ultimately won and said yes, we have to include it. You know. Um, you know, knew what they were talking about um, because we we don't know that the computers is is thinking or that you know like we were talking about earlier when a program won't open, you know, like uh, it's a way to delineate that it, something is happening versus if that spinny spinny beach ball or that hourglass stops, that means that there you know there might actually be something you know more to the delay that your computer might not be thinking about opening that app anymore. You know, it's it's not sure what to do at all. So it's just a visual reminder um, to to yeah. know that it's working on it. I agree with 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 the the decision to put the hourglass or whatever the icon is now the beach ball, the little circle. I think Windows is just a little circular thing that goes like this. Um, uh, because we like to we like to have feedback. We when we're put in a command or it's not happening we're wondering what's going on what's going on it's sort of like when that the person earlier was talking about they they click um and nothing happens you know the program doesn't open and we want to know well why isn't it opening you know it should be opening and so the the hourglass or the beach ball is just telling us that yes the computer's working it's happening something is happening all right yeah so the way you get rid of it is just wait you don't you don't need to do anything to get rid of it your computer will take care of that for you hopefully uh, do you want to shut down your desktop every night or leave it up and running? <laughs> I remember we got that question. Big when, question. Um, it's a I can't remember. I think Lauren said said something that made me think maybe I ought to shut it down more often than I do. Um, I never it's, shut. <laughs> see, uh, I shut my computer down every every time I finish using it. Pretty much, I shut it down. Sometimes my personal laptop, like my, my work computer. It gets shut down every night. I mean, every after I finish using it, I shut it down. On my personal computer, sometimes I'll leave it on if I know I'm going to be using it the same day or maybe like the next day or something. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's plugged in, so it's not going to run out of batteries or anything. And generally speaking, 
there's not going to be, it's not really a problem to leave them on. They don't draw a lot of electricity. Um, you know, it's not going to make the computer work worse, as far as I know. The only reason to really shut it down is, I mean, if you don't like the sound, I mean, you know, some computers don't have the fan on, it'll go, you know, sometimes that sort of thing is kind of annoying. Sometimes there are like lights that are flickering on the computer. So if it's in the room where you sleep, that could be, that could be kind of irritating. And the, the other reason software wise is it just gives your computer a fresh start. So when you, you usually will have multiple things running on your computer. So even if thing, things in the background I'm talking about, not like your browser or, you know, your email program or Zoom, you know, those things will be, are things you can see and that you're using, but there's also things running in the background. And sometimes there will be things running that don't need to be running necessarily. They just started up at some point when, when you did something and they never, they never turned off. Um, and so they're taking up, you know, a little bit of power on your computer, a little bit of uh, processing uh, power, and they don't really need to be there. So in those situations, when you shut down your computer, that's that little, whatever that process is, is not going to come back up on startup. So your computer is going to be just fresh with whatever is necessary for during the startup. So that's the main reason to do that, to restart, but it's not, not, not a, at all, not a requirement. I think it's more of a personal preference, really. Um, how to learn Word, Excel, and database. There are many ways. Um, I, I think the best way to learn is by using them. Uh, it's particularly Word and Excel. And you can do that at library. Uh, our library computers have Word and Excel. Um, most libraries have some sort of office suite, whether it's Google in you know, the Google suite or Microsoft Word and Excel. But there, there are also other ways. Uh, Connor, do you want to do you want to talk, tell people about uh, yeah, we if, yeah. If you uh, if you go to LA uh, County Library .orgs backslash um, learn, um, we have a lot of um, platforms like Universal Class and Gale Courses. These are all tools that that are provided free um, from your library card, where you can access classes related to technology. Um, you know, so there's going to be specific classes. Some of them have um, actual uh, um, instructors that you can have one on one, and are are you know, like a six week course on, you know, Excel um, or whatnot, or it could be like a, a, an hour long lecture about Excel basics where there is just a one way interaction. Um, you know, for, for every way you learn, um, there's gonna be uh, hopefully something that, that will, um, uh, you know, be something that, that will speak to you and how you learn. Um, but uh, in, in addition to, you know, that actual, you know, professional, um, help and assistance there like oleg said you know if you're one to to jump right in that's you know growing up that's how i you know self-taught myself you know all of these things and then obviously if you if you get to a certain level or you know it's so easy now that we could go to youtube and you know we could look at our you know our, our previous lectures on certain topics or you know non-library lectures um on certain topics that that uh there's just so much information out there it's kind of what's your learning style and what would be beneficial to you. Um, and we're just so lucky that, that there's probably something that's going to match your learning style, um, whatever that may be. Um, so there, there, there's my spiel. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many learning resources online. I mean, we live in, in, in terms of learning, we live in the best of all possible worlds, um, particularly if you're comfortable on a screen. But even if not, you can print things out. You can, there's, there's a lot of books that are very easy to get from the library and beyond. Um, so I'm almost, particularly with computer topics, there's so much to learn, but also there are so many resources, avenues with which to learn them, learn that. So I don't know. I'm very happy about it. I, I use our learning resources all the time um, for these classes and just for my personal life. I mean, I'm, I'm always trying to learn, learn new things. I was telling Connor the other day, I'm learning a very complicated text editor now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning <laughs> Emacs and I don't know why I'm doing it other than just curiosity. That's um, great. It, is there a schedule? The next question is there a schedule for upcoming computer classes? Yes, there is. Um, so you can, so I'm going to post a link in the chat. This is a link to our older adults page. And it's on the right hand side. It has our future computer classes, as well as other classes that where, where we put a keyword older adults in within the calendar. So not all those classes are specifically for older adults. And obviously, anybody can attend this class, you don't have to be an older adult to attend this class. But that's where the digital literacy classes would be. All right. 
Um, can you explain some of the symbols at the top of the desktop? Yes and no. Um, no, because your desktop might have different symbols than our desktops, and my desktop might have different symbols than Connor's. So it really depends on your specific computer. So if you can email me a picture of it, then, or at least, you know, what it, what computer it is, then yes, we could explain it. But just off the, off the top of my head, I, I'm, I wouldn't have trouble doing that. Can you do a presentation on USB thumb drives and how to format them? Okay, well, uh, yes, but that would just take a moment. I don't, I don't even need to do a whole presentation on that. Um, I do. I have one handy. Jeepers, if I had one around, um, I could just show you how to format. Okay, so, th so that's a USB. I, I was like, oh, physically, fi yes. I, yeah, I, I was looking for yeah, one well, so I could I, plug I, in my I, computer I, and just show you how to do it. Um, I, so. If, yeah, I don't want to, I have stuff on it. <laughs> yeah, don't format it. So there's, so it depends on what you mean by format. Typically in computerese, format means to delete everything off of, a, of an item. So you reformat the drive or whatever, the USB thumb drive. So you reformat, it means that you delete everything off of it and you can switch, you can change the file system, that kind of stuff that's beyond this class. Um, but if you format it, then yeah, you delete everything off of it. And the, rate, the way it, doing it is actually really easy. Um, the, essentially, you plug it in, it'll pop up um, either on your desktop, but if you go to your, your little computer, or you say, uh, and you'll have what the, your, 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 okay, uh, it would be much easier, it's much easier to show you. So let me see if I can just, if I can show you really quickly. Um, kind of. I mean, what, I, as, as Oleg is finding that, I'll, I'll say that over, you know, Gosh, when did thumb drives come out? You know, over the, the, the span of, of using thumb drives, I've never had to format one, you know, some, you know, like he said, when you, when you, um, you know, plug, plug one in and, you know, that comes up as an option. Um, I've, I've, I've never had to, to do that. Um, oh, you know what I'm but like, is there, is there a, <laughs> this, that was, that was crazy. Is it, is there, a, is there a, a, a time when um, formatting is, is, like, is there, because I don't know this, is there an event mm -hmm. in which ask, it, it's asking to format based on like corruption? Um, like why why would somebody be prompted to format something like that, like the thumb drive that they just got, mm -hmm. like picked up? Oh. Uh, other other than like, I mean, not... I had to do it, like I plugged it into my Xbox for, yeah. you know, for extra storage. If it needs to be, uh, if it needs to change the file system for some reason, typically it would be, uh, a drive would be formatted if, I'm well. If it need, if there's something up with it, if there's, if the computer can't read it for some reason, if it's a different file system than what your computer uses, that's really unusual, especially if you're just using a Windows or a Mac. Um, you know, right? These regular drives will work just fine. So I'm gonna plug mine in, and I'm gonna see. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys, and I'm gonna see if I, I don't know what's on this drive. So I'm, I don't know if I want to format it, but I'll show you. I'll show I was you like, that's why I didn't plug mine in. I, I don't know. What the... I'll show oh, you the oh, process oh, of, oh, of how to do it. Let's let's just uh, let's so we're back on this website. So I don't need to. I'm uh, I'm gonna plug it in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my start menu. And actually, I don't need. Uh, and I'm gonna go to the file manager. So let me see if there's a. Let me see if this is how you get to the file manager here. I just type in File Explorer on Windows. It's File Explorer. So I'm gonna go to File Explorer, and it's gonna bring up all the folders and everything on my on my computer. And so you get to, you get to something called like this PC. And so here's the devices and drives. Right now it's just a hard drive. And I'm gonna plug I'm plugging in my USB drive right now. Let me see if I have an extra USB slot here because I know I have my I have my headphones plugged in. I think I have one in the back of the computer. Um, so I'm gonna plug it in. I have a, I have a mouse and my USB plug. So I think I have a third one here. There we go. So I just plugged in my USB drive and it should pop up right down here. So there it goes. D drive plugged in as USB. So it seems as USB drive. So I just plugged it in. So it's mostly free. I just have a few things on it. I'm gonna click. I don't remember what's on it. Uh, so let me see. Okay. So, oh yeah, this like part. So we can get rid of these things. This is. I think this is when we were three. This is when we were 3D printing uh, masks uh, during the beginning at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I think we used this drive. So I can format this drive. Um, I don't mind. There's nothing special on it. So I have this. I have right here. I'm gonna right click. And I'm going to go to format. 
And again, what this is going to do is it's going to delete everything that's on this drive. So you get this little box and this is on Windows. It might be a little different on a Mac, uh, but probably it'll be somewhat similar. So this, it has 961 megabytes. Um, that's the amount of storage space on the device. Um, there's a file system. FAT is the default file system for 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 uh, for these drives. I assume uh, there's also these di uh, different kind of file systems. I wouldn't worry about it. Just leave it as FAT. And the a file system is essentially how your computer under the surface deals with you know files on your hard drive. So it's it's something that regular computer users don't have to worry about at all at all. We don't have to think about that. Okay, so then we've got this allocation unit size. Um, I'm again, I'm not going to worry about that. That's not something that's necessary. If I want to call it something else right now, it's just called USB drive. If I want to call it Oleg's storage hut, oh, it's, I can't even I can't even do much on it. So I'm going to call it. I'm just going to call it uh, five oh, hut. And then you can do long format, you can quick format. Let me do a quick format. It doesn't really matter for me. And I'm going to do a start. Formatting will erase all data on this disk. To format the disk, click OK. To quit, click Cancel. I'm OK. I'm going to undo it. That's it. It's very. It's not a very big hard, Not a very big USB drive. I just formatted it. And now I. Yep. Yeah, it's 960 megabytes of 960 megabytes free. I click on it. There's nothing in there because we just formatted. It. And that's how you format a USB drive. When you could show, it's it's much easier. I feel like it, it would be much easier to show that than it is to actually. Uh, it was much easier to show that than to just to explain all that. Uh, another plead for going over function control options and command tab purposes one more time. So this video is gonna. I mean, this uh, this presentation is gonna be on video. So I recommend going back and watching it on YouTube because there's a part where we spend quite a bit of time talking about keyboard shortcuts and the keyboard. And so I would recommend, rather than us going over it again, I recommend next week when I post this on YouTube, just watch that. And then you can watch it over and over again and you can, you can go back to parts that you're interested in and you can do Google searches as we're talking to learn about what we're doing. You can even try the keyboard shortcuts um, as we're talking about them. So, so I'm not gonna do that right now, I'm sorry, but, you will be able to watch it again. Okay. Uh, any other questions? You know, we're here. We're still available. We're still open. Uh, if you have any other questions, put them in the Q and A right now. Again, we have YouTube for Beginners in Spanish next Wednesday at eleven o'clock. We have How to Search the Web next Thursday at this very time, eleven o'clock on Thursday. And Connor. Thank you very much for presenting. If sure. y'all enjoyed the program out there, or if you didn't enjoy the program, if you have feelings about the program, <laughs> if you don't have any feelings, that's okay too. Uh, fill out our post-event survey, please. We we really appreciate it. We we like your feedback, whether it's positive or negative or somewhere in between. Um, if you want to email me, um, you can do that. I, I can post my email in the chat right now. Um, or um, just respond to the follow-up email. It's probably going to come from either me or Connor, probably Connor this time, but my email will be in the CC, so you'll be able to email me. You'll be able to see my email. Um, it's It looks like this. It's written written in the chat right now. Um, so yeah, yeah, feel free. Uh, okay. So I think that's... We had a question asking for for our email. Thanks, Connor. Do you want me to put my email down? No, we'll put you'll you'll send it in the follow-up email. So there's no I mean because otherwise somebody will have to like copy it really fast. So okay. there's not no no, no, <laughs> no problem sharing. Yeah, no problem. All right. Thanks everybody. We really appreciate you being here, asking your questions, sticking around while we answer the questions. Hopefully you learn something and are a little bit more excited or a lot more excited about using your computer and learning more about your computer. This has been computers, the very basics. And so now you're ready to move forward and get into computer intermediate topics. And I hope you do. Be curious and we'll see you next week. <laughs>